welcome back to my channel or if you're new welcome to my channel my name is Jamie Lee and I am a mixed media artist and here on my channel I talk about mixed media art supplies and techniques I also do some time-lapse and tutorial videos and I also do videos like today's video which is talking about cursed paintings in the past I've done videos on paranormal art art conspiracy theories and art Mandela effects so if you'd like to check any of those videos out I will leave a link up here and I will also leave them in the description box below and if you haven't already subscribed and those topics sound interesting to you please go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications of when I post new videos so let's get right to today's video which is all about cursed paintings first of all when I was doing research on this video I came up with some of the same stuff I came up with when I was searching for paranormal paintings so that kind of got me thinking okay what's the difference between a paranormal object or a paranormal painting and a cursed object or painting and so I did look up the difference cursed art is a magic spell or spell of some kind supposedly is placed on a person place or object and this is intended to bring about a negative consequence something bad will happen to the person that comes in contact with the object or the curse or spell or whatever so basically a curse means somebody does something with the intention of something bad or negative happening haunted or paranormal is a little bit different because that just means that an object a place a person is occupied by an entity or a spirit there may be no ill intent involved it may just be that this spirit or entity doesn't realize that they've passed on they're not really aware of what's going on in the current timeline of things so there's not necessarily a negative intent to a haunting or a paranormal event or object the first cursed item that i came across was something called the basano vase this is a silver vase from the 15th century, supposedly, and there are actually really no known photographs other than maybe this one here. Currently, nobody knows where this vase is located, and I'll get to the reason why a little bit later. This vase has almost no information. Almost all of the research and reporting on the curse of this vase is pretty much hearsay, pretty much just told stories passed down and as with any game of telephone that you've ever played uh, what starts out as fact ends up as wildly different circumstances storytelling all that kind of stuff it was very hard to find factual information because there really isn't any the best source of information that I found when I was doing my research for this was a website called gypsythread.org and there is a post from March 12th 2018 where basically as much of the facts as anybody knows about this vase are kind of laid out in one place so i found that to be very helpful here is the story of this vase back in the 15th century in a town north of napoli italy napoli napoli i'm gonna butcher it so just bear with me this vase this silver vase was given to a bride on the night before her wedding according to the legend or story the bride was found dead the next morning, her wedding day. The vase was passed from family member to family member after this young woman had the vase and passed away. And subsequently, each person that came into possession of the vase ended up dying as well. Now remember, this is the 15th century, so people were dying all over the place anyway. However, supposedly each person that came in contact with this vase and owned it ended up passing away in an untimely manner. So the family eventually decided that the vase must be cursed and they hid the vase. Some say somebody passed it to a priest and the priest buried it or hid it or something like that. The vase remained hidden for hundreds of years. The vase went out of memory and out of anybody's recollection until 1988. We have no names, we have no reference of family members, family names, dates, anything like that. So a young man supposedly found the vase, maybe dug up the vase from the spot where it had been hidden. Um, that's not really clear or reported, but the vase came back into existence 
and I believe this is when maybe the photograph might have been taken around this time. And according to the story, maybe there was actually a message in the vase. And here is what the message said. Beware, this vase brings death. So this young man who had found or dug up this vase, got the vase, read the message, and what does he do? Well, he auctions it off, of course. He actually auctioned the vase off for 4 million Italian lira, which would be somewhere around 2,540 US dollars. The winner of the auction was a pharmacist. This unnamed pharmacist died three months after getting the vase. Now then, from the pharmacist, the vase was sold to a doctor who also passed away uh, unexpectedly at the age of 37. After this happened, the vase was again sold to an archaeologist slash artifacts collector. I mean, somebody obviously with a little bit of knowledge of something like this item. He died of a mysterious infection after he acquired the vase. As the story goes, there were several more deaths that followed wherever this vase went until finally, somebody got a clue. One person decided he'd had it or she'd had it with this vase, didn't want anything more to do with it, and so they chucked it out a window. Of course, since this vase seems to be just bad luck all around, what happens when they chucked it out the window? They almost hit a passing, let's see if I can say this one, carabinieri? Carabinieri? Anyway, a passing police officer right in the head. So the police officer, obviously, wanting to know why somebody was throwing this silver vase at his head, found the person that threw it out the window and tried to give it back to them and also fined them for throwing this. And the person said, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll pay the fine, no big deal, but I'm not taking that vase back. And literally they refused to take the vase back into their home. The ending of this is apparently the vase has been reburied in an undisclosed location, possibly in a lead box. Basically the person who buried it knows where it is, but I guess the thought is that as long as this vase is buried, as long as nobody can come into contact with it, then the long string of deaths associated with this vase will end and it will not bring its curse upon anybody else. To talk about some of the parts of the story that are a little bit questionable, when I was researching the story of this vase, like I said, the details are sketchy, spotty, and some of them seem to be just plain made up. Like I said, there's only one photograph of the actual vase. There's a bunch of things about all of this that really don't add up. So let's go way back to the 15th century. This young lady who is getting married the next day is given this wedding gift of a silver vase. The theory is that somebody gave it to her with ill intent and wished her dead or that she was murdered after she got the vase or when she got the vase. And so as she was laying there dying, this makes for a very, uh, you know, movie quality tale. With her last breath, she uttered vengeance on anybody who basically came into contact with this vase. Um, so that she could get her revenge for somebody killing her on the night she was supposed to be, you know, getting married the next day. Of course, there's no evidence that this actually happened. Um, there's no names, no dates, no nothing. So, good story. Another thing that didn't add up is that the vase is made of silver, and traditionally, silver is actually used to ward off evil. And so there's really not a lot of um, evidence that silver is used as a cursed object since it is more often used to keep bad intentions away. The fact that it was made out of silver is a little strange. Also, if this was actually made in the 15th century, which everybody assumed that it was, the vases of that time period were nothing like this plain silver vase. 15th century vases were actually very ornate. They were usually made of porcelain. The shape and the size and the base of the way this vase was made was actually wrong um, if you're comparing it to vases of that time period. Now there are vases that are similar to the Bassano vase. It is comparable to vases made in China in the 1700s. So that would put this vase at being a lot later than the story supposedly took place. So something around that doesn't really make sense or add up. The final piece of this that people have said that maybe this has some sort of curse in it and it has a lid and as long as the lid was kept on it, the curse was contained within the vase. But as soon as somebody opened the lid, then the curse was unleashed, basically. Uh, again, sounds like Hollywood, pretty cool story. Was any of that true? 
we might never know. Only a handful of people know about where the vase is buried or hidden. This might just be a very interesting story that is almost entirely made up. That is the story of the cursed Bassano vase. The second thing I have to talk about is actually an entire set of artwork done by one specific painter, sculptor, artist. These are the cursed surrealistic paintings of Polish painter, you're gonna have to forgive me, Zdzisław, Zdzisław Bixinski. Well, if you notice that things look a little different, this is a couple days later and editing me discovered while I was doing the rest of the video that this entire upcoming segment was either not recorded or somehow accidentally got deleted. I don't know what happened, uh, it just isn't there. And I don't know if you want to say that means this video is cursed. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? I just decided to sit down today and film this segment by itself and then after this one's done it will go back to the original footage from the first time because everything else was there. So I am talking about the Polish painter, sculptor, and photographer Zdzislaw Beksinski. I am terrible, I am sorry. Zdzislaw was born in February of 1929. He became a really well-known artist, sculptor, and painter in his native Poland as well as in a lot of places in Western Europe and even Japan. And he's most well-known for his dystopian surrealism paintings. Uh, what does that mean? If you've ever seen these paintings, it means they are nightmarish and horrific. <laughs> They're just extremely disturbing paintings and when he was asked about you know what he paints and why he paints that particular thing he really never gave a reason he said I paint what I paint basically and that's there's no meaning behind it there's no disturbing thoughts or ideas that I have this is just what I paint and he even refused to name any of his artwork he didn't like giving a name to any of them they were just he painted them and then he put them out there and he actually studied as an architect he never formally studied painting he worked mostly in oil paints on hardboard. He started putting out his paintings somewhere around 1960. Right away, he was very successful. He's actually known to be a leading figure in contemporary Polish art. In fact, his very first show that he put on display, he sold the entire show. From the 1960s to the 1980s, he created paintings that were disturbing, and dark and surrealistic and almost dystopian. They featured skeletons, deformities, nightmarish scenes, doomsday, death, and they were hugely popular. Uh, they actually still are. He moved on to sculpture and he became a very well-known sculpture artist, um, famous in Europe and Japan and also the United States. He was really good at adapting to the different changing times and technologies because in the 1990s he discovered photo manipulation and digital art and he made a name for himself from basically the 1990s throughout the end of his life doing digital artwork and photo manipulation. Also in the 1990s is when we get to the series of tragedies that happened in his life that lead people to think that maybe the paintings, the disturbing and dark paintings that he did somehow brought about bad luck or a curse on him because the end of his life was not a happy ending. He had several very tragic and terrible things happen to him before he passed away and even his own death he was murdered. The first of the tragedies for Zdisla occurred in 1998 when his wife Zofia died of cancer. Then on December 24th of 1999, his son Tomas, who was a very successful, talented, popular musician and public figure, committed suicide and his father was the one that found him after this happened. Obviously, losing his wife and his son so close to each other really had an impact on him. Then on February 21st, 2005, Zdisla was found in his flat 
dead of 17 stab wounds. Not too long after his body was discovered, the perpetrator was found and arrested, and it turned out that the person that did this to him, a man who was, at this point, in 2005, I think he would have been in his 80s, he was stabbed to death by his longtime cleaning lady's son and the son's friend. The son's name was Robert Kupiet. The friend's name was Lucas. They were arrested and put on trial. Robert ended up getting 25 years in prison for the crime and his friend ended up getting five years in prison. Why did these two young men decide to stab to death an old man? Basically they wanted money and Zdysla refused to loan them what would have ended up being about a hundred bucks in US dollars. What do you think? Do you think there's a correlation between the disturbing and dark art that he produced with really no explanation and no real meaning to it and the tragic events of the end of his life or do you really think that that was just you know kind of a coincidence and bad things happen i guess i can leave that up for you to decide for yourself all right so now we are going to go back to the recorded portion of the video to finish it out with one more example of cursed artwork The last cursed artwork that I have to talk about is a supposedly cursed landscape painting. It is unnamed. Uh, and unsigned. Nobody knows who actually created this painting. The story of this painting is that not only is it cursed, but certain people who view the painting could reveal their own psychic powers by looking at this painting. This painting of a castle on the shore of somewhere. Now, how does that even work? Okay, here's the story. So as you can see, the painting itself is a, a castle. Uh, there is some land and some rocks. So basically showing that this castle is on the shore of some lake or the ocean. There's, you know, some clouds, maybe a little bit stormy in the sky, and that's pretty much it. It's basically a landscape painting that's, you know, of a castle. Well, except, except if you're psychic, you may see some things in this painting that other people who look at it just don't ever see. So what are those things? We have a Viking warrior, a caravan or a covered wagon, eyes, a skull in the clouds, people either up in the clouds or in the castle area, and people have also reported seeing objects or items in the rock area along the shore. Only certain people have seen hidden items in the painting. Other people looking at it can look and look and look and they just don't see them. So the story has gone that if you can look at this painting and see those items, then you may have some psychic ability. Now the other part of this is you look at this painting and you see hidden objects. Maybe somebody put them there, maybe you know that's why they didn't sign it, they didn't want it coming back to them. Who knows? How does that make this painting cursed? Well, Here's where the curse comes in. The people who look at this painting, many of them report a bad feeling, a physical actually reaction to the painting. It was said that one woman actually fainted while she was looking at the painting. Dogs hate this painting, cannot stand the sight of it. And that's always a pretty good uh, indicator of some sort of paranormal type thing going on with the object. Now one owner who had it kept trying to hang this painting up in their residence and every time they hung it up it fell down off the wall. The story goes with this painting that it was purchased years ago by a woman who owned a shop in Wolverhampton in the UK and in the shop it also kept falling off the wall and the shopkeeper she had kids and the kids said that they were scared of this painting they didn't like it and said that people kept coming out of the painting. So this lady asked her friend, who happened to be acclaimed psychic Philip Solomon, to take the painting off her hands because she didn't want to deal with it anymore. So Philip agreed to take the painting and then he sold it to the owner of a shop on Walsall Road in Willenhall. While it was in the shop, it actually scared the shoppers. Several people fainted in the shop looking at this painting and of course, our number one indicator, dogs hated it. So. Through no fault of his own, Philip got the painting back. It was said that an American paranormal museum was interested in purchasing the painting. The painting actually changed hands several times. It went across the pond to the United States, then it went back to the United Kingdom. It kept coming back to Philip for some reason. 
So a family member of Phillips decided they actually really liked this painting and they wanted to have it. So he gave it to that person and then they gave it back because they told him, quote, strange things are happening. So at this point, Philip kind of thought, maybe this painting has something else going on with it. He took the painting, he wrapped it up and he put it in a garden shed. The painting has been out one last time, according to the article that I read about it. It was taken to the Robin Club to be displayed and for people to look at it and there was going to be like a presentation. Maybe people were going to come see if they had psychic powers. When it was put up there for display, the staff at the Robin Club said it scared them. They didn't like having the painting in their place of work at all. Also when Philip would bring the painting out, put it in the shed, his dog hated the painting and would growl and bark constantly at it until he got it out of the sight of his dog. So that is where this painting has ended up. It was in the possession of Philip the Psychic. Um, he was displaying it for people who are interested in knowing about their psychic abilities, but for the most part it remains hidden and wrapped up so that it can inflict its weird vibe on you know unsuspecting people. I don't know which American Paranormal Museum is interested in buying it but that might be a place where it ends up in the future but at the end of the article that I read at least it was just kind of being kept hidden for now he was wanting to find out possibly who created the painting why the painting was causing the effects that it was causing was there a story behind it but at the time of that article there was no answers to those questions he was just beginning to search so that is the haunted castle painting that possibly tells you if you are psychic or not. So that's today's video, three cursed artwork items, and I would love to hear from you. What do you think? Do you think these items are cursed? Do you think people love to make up stories around items? And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for anything you'd like me to cover, any weird art related topic, I've done art theft. I have several more haunted artwork stories that I could tell in a future video, so if you're interested in me doing another video on that, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. I hope you have a great day. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I know the world is weird right now, so hopefully this kind of helps lighten the mood and provide you with a little bit of interesting entertainment for a little bit, and I will see you next time. Bye! Didn't want anything more to do with that, and didn't want. Jeez, love. Bixkinski, no. Bixinski. Zdislav. 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 Bixkin. Bixinski. Zdislav. Okay. Zdislav. Wait. Zdislav. Zdislav. Bixinski. Zdislav. Bixin. Bix. <laughs> My mouth does not do that. I don't, I don't get it. Zdyslav Beksinski. Beksinski. Beksinski? Wait, even that was pronounced weird. Let me go ahead and Google Trent. It's like that. Because, oh. okay. Beksinski. Beksinski. And, and what does that mean? That means these paintings are a horrific nightmare. Let's back up and start again. Um.